Next thing I wanted to make for the titch is a grate for the coal. And the set of parts that I bought came with this beautiful stainless steel grate. The thing is, it's larger by a good bit than the dimensions that are called for in the drawings. And it's very well constructed, but it's not only is it larger, but it's also thicker, deeper. And looking at the actual setup here on the on the locomotive, there's just not a lot of room. And in fact, LBSC talks about it, how he made the 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 uh, pan very shallow so it would clear the rear eccentric there. So I haven't made the pan yet, the ash pan, but I think I'm going to make an actual grate according to the dimensions that are given by LBSC in the plans. Here's the actual underside of the boiler. You can see the inside of the the grate area is right at approximately two inches by about two and a quarter. So the, the one that's called for in the plans is an inch and seven eighths by two and an eighth. So it looks like that's the perfect size for fitting inside this space, which is part of the reason that I decided to go ahead and make that. And what I was talking about when I talked about the eccentrics before, especially with the slip eccentrics, you've got three eccentrics on the rear axle here. And you know, the, the boiler lugs are resting right here. So there really is not a lot of room for the, the pan. So all the more reason to go ahead and make a smaller ash pan. Now the first step in making the grate, I meant to say grate a minute ago, not ash pan. First step in making the grate is to cut 14 little eighth inch thick slices of quarter inch stainless steel rod, but I have to drill a hole through them first. So I'm not going to show all this, it'd be kind of a waste of video, but I will face it off then use a center drill, drill a number 30 hole. I'm not obviously not going to drill that deep at first. I'll go like half inch or three quarters and then stop and then cut off a bunch till I run out of hole <laughs> and lather, rinse, repeat until I've made 14 of them. So I won't show the whole thing, but I'll bring you back when I've got 14 of them made. After I cut off all these little stainless steel spacers, a couple of them, well four of them actually, were a little bit too thick. So what I'm doing is holding them in a vice grip like this, and I'm using my trusty Rockwell sander grinder. It's a 1 by 42 inch grinder, and then I just check it. I just take a little bit off. Let's see. Where are we at? So that's 126 thou, 125, so right at just a little over an eighth inch. But just following up, the whole point is you don't want a bunch of them that are too wide, obviously. Just a little note here, once I run them through the, the grinder, the belt sander, to get them to the right thickness, um, that could leave a little burr. So what I've done is I've got a, the number 30 drill held in the small vice grips there. So I'll run that through like kind of like a reamer. And then just to check, make sure we don't have any surprises, I've got my piece of 8th inch stainless steel rod. I'll pass that through just to make sure it fits as well. And the next task in making the grate is simple. That is cutting... 5 16th by 8th inch thick steel flat bar for the great pieces. Since my vise on my milling machine is a little bit, is a 6 inch vise, I'm cutting, doing a, doing these in 6 inch, six, about 6.5 inch sections at a time. That should be enough for 3 bars, so I'll just have to do several sections of this. But I've marked it out, now I'll cut it on the bandsaw. Just wanted to show milling the bars to size. Sorry about all the machine noise. Okay, I finally had a little time to get back on the grate here. And uh, this was kind of fun actually. I went ahead and threaded through. As you can see, I got an eighth inch stainless steel rod here. I threaded through all the pieces. A couple of thoughts. I'm gonna organize this so that the rounded sections, that, that the mill finish edges of the bar stock are up. Um, I think that would be better for the coal. It would be less likely for stuff to stick on it. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Please tell me if you have an opinion. So what I'm going to do is leave a little bit protruding here that I can clamp in a vise and then cut this off pretty short, pretty close to what you see here. 
and then and uh, then I'll thread through the other side just like this put the whole assembly in the vise clamping it in the in the bottom parts here and use my hammer to peen over the end just like LBSC talks about on both and then I can flip it over and cut off the little excess and peen over that end. That's kind of my game plan. We'll see if that works out or not. Here we go, the grate all set up. I'm double checking to make sure I've got the countersunk ends outboard and the threaded portion, the part that's uh, drilled and tapped is slightly below on either side. Yep. And that's the countersunk end as well. So you can see my setup here. I'm going to clamp these parts, the long parts in the vise, and then I can use my big ball peen hammer to smack the uh, peen over the ends and then cut these off, the long parts off. That way I don't waste too much material. I can cut those off and then um, peen over the other ends. I think I'm pretty much done peening the ends over. As you can see, they have the nice rounded shape here. First, I, I try to massage them with the large end of the ball peen hammer, and then obviously I use the, the rounded peen to try to create that little dome shape that you see. So it looks good, and I think it's all nice and together. The only bad thing about it is that I put a little curve into it with the pressure on it. So what I'm going to try to do is use my vise to straighten it out a little bit. I'll bring you back and show you what that looks like. And here I've got the little grate. I've got a couple of pieces of aluminum on the ends and a piece of steel stock here in the back to act as a pusher. And see if I can, yeah, there we go. I don't know if you can see that, but it's going, it's gone to the flat and a little bit beyond. As you know, when you try to take a bend out, you need to go a little beyond to try to take the kink out. So. I'm going to put the phone down and the camera down and see if we've got it flat yet. Still a little bit of a bow to it, but not bad at all. Not nearly as much as it was. So let me take the tape off and we'll do a little final segment on this thing. Well, this was a fun little project. Obviously, it, it really didn't take that long. It just uh, took me long to publish the video since I was occupied with other things. But this is the finished grate using steel pieces just like LVSC talks about and the only difference I use stainless steel for the rod inside I think that's a smart idea this one here is made out of stainless this came with the set of parts that I got and it looks like a commercially prepared one and obviously as you can see it is very much larger and um, this one will fit nicely inside the the firebox area of the boiler and there's the book so I'll let this be the concluding episode the next thing I want to make is the ash pan and I've got uh, got some metal to bend up with that so I'll do I'll do show that next week so thanks everybody appreciate y'all being part of the journey please give me a thumbs up or ask any questions if you have any thank you